Hello and welcome. You're watching NDTV 24/7. I'm Tanushree Pandey, coming live from Ground Zero, where it's the sixth day of the rescue operations after the devastating earthquake hit Turkey and Syria on Monday. Just a short while back, tremors were again being felt in Hatay province, where we are right now, and that's why the manual rescuing work has been stopped for the time being. Turkish army has asked rescuers to stay away from the buildings because they do not want any more loss of lives. Now, what you see. Here has become a common sight across uh, the southeastern part of Turkey. We have been reporting of how thousands of people have been displaced in Turkey alone. Thousands of children have lost their lives, and the death toll has reached more than 24,000, including Syria and Turkey. And it's rising by the day. Rescue operations are on, are on around the clock, but chances of people being alive under the debris are getting slimmer by each second. It's now a race against time for rescuers. Meanwhile, the Indian Army has set up a hospital in the Hatay region to deal with surgeries. In the next half an hour, we are going to show you gut-wrenching visuals and stories of the layers of devastation and human tragedy that has hit Turkey and the efforts being made to save lives. This is how everything has stopped because the rescuers are trying to hear. The voices which are coming from the debris. So the rescuer, rescuers are trying to hear the voices which are coming from under the debris, and that's why they have asked everybody to maintain pin drop silence. And this is how the entire traffic is stopped. You can hear voices of the rescuers who are screaming and trying to hear the voices which are coming from under the rubble of anybody who could have been trapped and is still alive. This is how the rescue work is going round the clock. It is extremely difficult for rescuers to rescue people who could have been still alive under the debris and that's why pin drop silence is being maintained they have asked everybody to stay quiet so that they can hear voices from under the debris this is another region where just a short while back tremors were again being felt see the devastation here several buildings several Multi-storied buildings collapsed after the earthquake, and now the more buildings are on the verge of collapsing after the tremors. How many family members you lost, sir? 7, 29 years old, 30 years old, 42 years old, 19 years old, 19 years old. 7 families. You used to live here? Yes, I lived here. So this man has lost seven of his family members and what you see behind me has become a common sight across the southeastern part of Turkey. A devastating earthquake hit, struck Turkey and Syria on Monday and now uh, it's day six of the rescue operations but just a short while back the rescue work was stopped here in Hatay as tremors were being felt again and that's why the Turkish army which is present here they have asked the rescuers and the media personnel to be to stay away from the buildings which have collapsed I, I will also show you that there are buildings which did not collapse but now the weak the base is extremely weak and they can fall or collapse at any point of time these buildings have been declared as unfit for living permanently and they can collapse even uh, even after a aftershock now that's why the rescue work has been stopped here for the time being and uh, the Turkish army is saying that the rescuers have to uh, stay away from the, from, the, from the buildings as they can collapse at any point of time. This is in Hatay region, one of the worst affected areas in Turkey and there are huge machineries you, see, you can see at the backdrop there are equipment which have been brought in to pull 
the debris out so that more lives can be saved and if uh, and, and you know more people can be pulled out alive but since it's day six and it has become a, a race against time even for the rescuers it's very unfortunate but they are saying that the harsh reality on the ground is that all they expect to find now are the dead bodies when we reached here 17 dead bodies were pulled out from under the debris of these buildings which collapsed and since tremors were being felt just a short while back for the time being rescue work has been stopped here in Hatay this is the worst one of the worst affected regions one of the worst affected provinces after Gaziantep where we were yesterday and this is the area where in fact the Indian army has also set up a hospital we will be showing you how the Indian Army has stepped up to take care of the surgeries and how they are dealing with casualties here in Turkey but for now this is the situation on the ground where the rescue work had to be stopped as tremors were being felt again in Hatay and at least four to five huge buildings collapsed here thousands of people have already died the death toll right now stands at at least 24,000 including Syria and Turkey and it's rising by the day this is Tanushree Pandey reporting for NDTV from Ground Zero in Turkey <coughs> unfortunate news now coming in first casualty of an Indian national in the Turkey earthquake has now been confirmed the government sources have confirmed to us that 35 year old Vijay Kumar who belonged to Pori Garwal in Uttarakhand who came to Turkey on January 23 2023 for a project work uh, has now been confirmed dead he was staying in a four-star hotel uh, in Malatya region one of the worst affected areas and in fact this morning his documents were found from under the debris under the rubble of the house of the hotel where he was staying but his body was yet to be found and the family members who were sitting in Uttarakhand were praying that he is alive somewhere but just a short while back the government has confirmed to us that the first casualty of an Indian national has been confirmed Vijay Kumar Vijay Kumar's body has been recovered from under the debris of a hotel in Malatya uh, and the body was identified by his family members. The rescue team, the rescuers on the ground, the rescuers on the ground took a picture of his body, of his crushed body and, and, and uh, I will again tell the viewers that these the, the words we are using, the visuals we are going to show can be extremely triggering so viewers uh, discretion is advised but the, uh, but the picture of his body was sent uh, to his family in Pori Garwal in Uttarakhand. They identified the body by a tattoo on Kumar's left hand and that's that's how the body was identified and now uh, it's confirmed that the first Indian national uh, there's a casualty of an Indian national the first Indian national in the Turkey earthquake in fact in fact uh, he he was an engineer who worked in Pori Garwal he came to Turkey for a project work now we have spoken to our sources in MEA and the government Indian government the Indian ambassador in Turkey uh, has Virinder Paul has already spoken to the Turkish government and they are expediting the process to send the mortal remains uh, to India back uh, it's extremely unfortunate for me to say uh, this but the body was found in a, in a in a very bad state it was completely crushed it was under the debris of a four-star hotel of a multi-storied building for the last five days and that's why the body was completely crushed uh, the government sources are telling us that they have to keep the body they, the mortal remains in a coffin and that's how they have to send it back to his family in India in Uttarakhand and we are right now you can see behind me an Indian flag this is the army hospital which has been set up by the Indian army unit uh, in Iskenderun in Hatay province Hatay is one of the worst affected regions uh, this is where the second earthquake came the first was uh, in Gaziantep province uh, where we were reporting yesterday the second one was here and now there are more than 90 countries have stepped up their aid and they have set up medical camps units India being the first countries to help Turkey in this situation under Operation Dost. Uh, NDRF personnel were sent on the ground and a, a hospital has also been set and as you can see uh, uh, right behind me we are at the army hospital where several 
Turkish people are right now being treated. In fact, yesterday, uh, the Indian Army unit, the medical unit of the Indian Army has successfully uh, done uh, a leg amputation surgery of a person who was completely, his leg was, leg was completely crushed. He was under the debris for four days and he was brought into the Indian Army hospital where he was uh, treated. A surgery was conducted, of a leg amputation surgery was con conducted and it was successful. So, uh, kudos to the, to the, you know, to the uh, surgeons, to the medical teams of India who have stepped up uh, their aid and indeed they are uh, proving to be a friend of Turkey, that's what the, the, the you know the Turkish ambassador said that a friend in need is a friend indeed, and many countries have right now stepped up their aid. This is the hospital in Iskenderun in Hatay, one of the worst affected one of the worst affected regions in Turkey, and now the death toll stands at 24,000. Uh, this is more. Uh, this is including Syria and Turkey, but in Turkey alone, at least 20, more than 20,000 people have died. Thousands have been displaced. Thousands of children have lost their families, but. The death toll is increasing by each passing minute by the day and in fact it's the sixth day of the rescue uh, operations in Turkey here on Ground Zero but extremely unfortunate for us to report on this but the rescuers are saying that it has, it's a race against time for them. They, uh, it's, 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 the harsh reality on the ground is that all they expect to find are now the dead bodies because it's next to impossible for any person to be staying alive under the debris uh, under the rubble of huge uh, buildings which have collapsed without water or food for six days. So now it's a, it's a race against time. We really hope uh, that rescuers are being able to rescue more people alive. But they are saying that the harsh reality on the ground is that all they expect to find are the dead bodies. We have spoken to the NDRF contingent commander Gurinder Singh yesterday in Noor Dagi area in uh, Gaziantep province, which is one of the worst affected regions. Again, Gaziantep is the province which where the earthquake of 7.8 magnitude hit on Monday. And we spoke to him. He told us about the kind of help NDRF had personnel. More than 150 NDRF have been giving. And he also told us how uh, they found a six-year-old Turkish girl from under uh, the rubble of a hotel. Listen in. in Talki, one of the worst affected areas in the Gaziantep province uh, and here uh, the in India was in fact one of the first countries to step up and help uh, Turkey in this kind of a dynamic situation where an earthquake has already caused the loss of lives of at least 18,000 people. Right now I have the entire team of NGRF which came here on day one and started the rescue operation with me is uh, the contingent commander uh, Gurminder. So thank you for speaking to NDTV and of course thank you for everything you are doing. First of all I would like to ask you that you have been here since day one. What kind of uh, what kind of scenes have you been seeing on the ground? Also where has the rescue operation uh, operation reached? Right now uh, we have two teams, NDRF teams at uh, Nurka uh, in the uh, Gazian province and one of the team has gone to another province south from here, Pankya. Uh, so uh, well, when we came here, we saw that uh, in this uh, small new dark town, uh, when we, uh, there are about 2,000 buildings are there, not just 200 buildings are there, 581 have completely collapsed. And uh, there was total chaos out here. And uh, we started our work from the very first hour. Uh, I came here at 7 o'clock and 9 o'clock my team was on the ground. And that is the reason that uh, we are able to uh, save one uh, precious life, a little child, six-year-old. Six-year-old. Yes. So, so what kind of resources are being put up? You, you told me there are there's a canine search. And if you can tell us more on that. Uh, you are uh, correct. Uh, we have uh, each team has got those uh, search and rescue spots, and uh, we do uh, physical search, technical search, and the canine search. And we have found that. Uh, because of so many uh, team, uh, teams working, so, so, so many machines working, so uh, technic uh, with, uh, technical equipment, the uh, dog squad has been found very useful, especially uh, the uh, female dog, Julie. Uh, she is the one who has indicated uh, life victim to us and we are able to save the Yes, sir. And you know, it's, it's the fifth day because of the race against time, the rescue operations will soon be over and it will be all about the recovery operations. What do you think? How do you see the days uh, 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 Recovery operations using brick crane started even yesterday. But you see, uh, today only uh, the Spanish uh, contingent has uh, recovered a uh, 
live with them. So we never know. Uh, so today and still we are finding bodies. And uh, at the same time, the ASR5, uh, that is the uh, use of hobby machines, is also started. Uh, so as long as uh, we are finding the uh, live victims, we are uh, going to stay here and keep working and hopefully uh, we will find another victim, another live victim. So that is our endeavor. We hope so too. And we, if, just the last question before we let you go, sir. Uh, you know, NDRF is known to be the first unit which is in ground whenever there is a disaster in India. This is, this is a, of course, this is a foreign land, the language, there is a language that very most of the people here do not speak English, they do not understand English. How is how the team uh, uh, Madam, Madam, you are very correct. Uh, we had had uh, earlier two experiences, one in Japan and one in Nepal. Uh, and uh, I have had experience in uh, working in United Nations peacekeeping force. So, uh, when you are working in an international uh, setup like this, language is a barrier and the com communication and the coordination is the biggest challenge which we face. So, we were aware of it. Uh, so, the moment we landed, we, uh, we requested the uh, local administration to provide us with the interpreters. These interpreters are uh, really very uh, great help in hand to all of us. That is what the catch was. So, there are total 152 uh, indirect personnel who are on the ground. Yes, right now I want to do a question consisting of three in Thank you for speaking to NDTV and this is the fantastic team which has been in Turkey from day one ever since the earthquake has caused a massive disruption, a massive destruction on the ground and this is the team from India which has come, this is the team of NDRM and they will be here carrying out rescue operations and recovery operations in the days to come. This is Kanishri Pandey reporting from uh, Gazinte province in Turkey for NDTV. And then to the Syria. Uh that was, uh, uh, you know, a story, gut-wrenching visuals and story from Nurdag, where in in Gaziantep province, where we yesterday, right now, we are inside the army hospital, the Indian army hospital, which has been set up in Iskenderun city in Hatay province, one of the worst affected regions in Turkey. And right now, joining me is Lieutenant Colonel Whippin, who has been here since day one, supervising the entire, uh, you know, rescuing work, as well as uh, the surgeries, which, which the Indian Army is doing yesterday. They uh, successfully conducted a leg amputation surgery of a Turkish man. Th Sir, thank you so much for speaking to NDTV at this point of time. We really appreciate it. What can you tell us more about how many surgeries have uh, you conducted? Uh, actually, we are doing only limb and life-saving surgeries. Uh, we are doing around 10 to 12 surgeries a day. So uh, yesterday we did a major uh, surgery. A patient came with uh, uh, gangrenous uh, lower limb. Uh, uh, he was rescued after 96 hours of the uh, compressor debris. So you are telling that 96 hours after someone was rescued and his leg was completely gangrene. Did they save him for his health? Yes, they were first resuscitate kiya gaya then ka uh, above knee amputation kiya gaya jisse ki sharir mein infection na fail sake ji ji sir abhi tak kitne log la ja chuke hain indian army ke hospital mein uh, around uh, daily 200 to 300 patients are coming uh, 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 if i can yeah so, so, so the lieutenant uh, colonel is telling us that every day about 200 to 300 people are coming. He, he's just one of the persons who has just been uh, Thank you. recharged and uh, uh, discharged from the hospital. And very sorry, discharged from the Indian Army Hospital, which has been set up. And they are thanking the Indian government. Do you want to say something, sir? Thank you, Hindustan. Thank you, India. He said, thank you, India. Thank you. Thank you for being here. We are so appreciating uh, India. They are with us. We are so happy they are here. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. you. So do you want to say something? Uh, oh, Feeling dang. Are you feeling okay now? Yeah. 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 You're feeling. He's, good. He's, good. He's uh, feeling very bad. Right after the uh, medication that Indian uh, Army had. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So this is the brilliant, the fantastic team of uh, the Indian Army who have been conducting surgeries 
from day one in Turkey, they, India was one of the first countries to step up aid and uh, reach the ground. In fact, more than 150 NDRF personnel have reached the ground on from, since day one. And uh, army units were also sent in, medical teams were sent in. A one army hospital has now been set up where uh, the army personnel are conducting surgery. Sir, if you can tell us a little more about what is the situation now, what do you think is that the death toll can increase? How many people do you think is that the death toll can increase? No, the patient first 48 hours comes to the first 48 hours, but after 4-5 days, the most dead body is mostly dead body. वेरी लकी पर्सन कैन बी सेव सर हम लोग भी वही बात सोचने की कोशिश कर रहे थे कि जो छठा दिन आज है तो जितनी संभावना है बचने की द चांसेस आर गेटिंग स्लिमर बाय इट सेकेंड तो अब आप लोग के पास कैसे तरीके के पेशेंट आ रहे हैं कोई चांसेस है कि उनको बचाया जा सके कितनी कितनी खराब स्थिति में लाया जा रहा है कम्प्लीटली क्रश्ड अभी यहाँ पे एक तो टेम्परेचर बहुत कम है पेशेंट चार पाँच दिन से कुछ खाया नहीं है कोई दबा हुआ है तो उसको कम टेम्परेचर में हाइपोथर्मिया होने के चांस होते हैं और डिहाइड्रेशन हो जाता है तो उसको हम सबसे पहले रिससिटेट करते हैं उसको टेम्परेचर बढ़ाने के लिए थर्मामीट हीटर्स का यूज़ करते हैं आईवी फ्लूड से रिससिटेट करते हैं बट अभी आप बोल रहे हैं कि जितने लोग हो सकता था बचने की संभावना है वो सेवेंटी आवर्स तक बच चुके हैं अब ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा डेड बॉडीज को रिकवर करने का काम किया जा रहा है जो कि बहुत एक खराब अनफॉर्चुनेट बात है एंड दैट्स प्रिसाइसली व्हाट वी वर रिपोर्टिंग ऑन दैट इट्स द सिक्स डे ऑफ द रेस्क्यू ऑपरेशंस इन टर्की एंड इवन द रेस्क्यूअर्स आर टेलिंग अस दैट द हार्श रियलिटी ऑन द ग्राउंड इस But the harsh reality is that it's a race against time for the rescuers. Even the rescuers are doing a silent rescue work. They're asking all the people who are surrounding the building to be absolutely quiet so that they can hear any kind of voices which can be coming from under the rubble. I will again show you some of the visuals and I will tell the viewers who are watching this show right now on NDTV that the visuals we are going to show you can be triggering so viewers' discretion is advised. He is a man who has just been brought into the Indian Army Hospital in Iskenderun in Hate province, and I will try and I will try and take a question, sir. Inko, Inko, abhi uh, uh, has he just been brought in? Is it in a bus? Sir, abhi laya gaya hai Inko. No, no, no. इनको अभी लाया गया है। हाँ, अभी लाया गया है। अच्छा, तो इनकी क्या स्थिति है? थोड़ा बता। डॉक्टर देख रहे हैं। जी, जी। ओके। अभी इनको जब दबे हुए थे वहाँ से नीचे से, अभी निकाल के इनको क्रेसिस इंजरी यहाँ है यहाँ पे। क्रेसिस इंजरी यहाँ है। जी, जी। अभी डॉक्टर साहब देख रहे हैं इनको। so that's 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 a good news that people are still being rescued alive and the army hospitals which have been set up especially the Indian Army Hospital which has been set up here are trying their best they're doing their every bit to uh, keep uh, you know you know to make the situation uh, better on the ground in fact one of the person who was just rescued uh, from under the rubble he is uh, he has suffered some injuries on his leg there will be a surgery which will be conducted on him but as of now he is doing fine Ma'am, uh, you have someone in uh, in the hospital? I will translate it for her. Your family is here in the hospital? Yes, yeah. her family is in the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Are, they, are they okay right now? Ailen okay, iyi mi diyor şu an? Abim şey şehit oldu sadece. His brother passed away. That's why they are so sad. I'm extremely sorry. His father has passed away. His brother passed away. Her brother passed away. Yes. That's why they are so sad. Who is admitted right now in the hospital? Sorry. Who is admitted right now in the Indian Army Hospital? For for her family? Yeah, yeah. His sister and father. And ma'am, his ma'am, they are all in the hospital right now. In the now. hospital and yes. the brother passed away. Yes. We are extremely sorry ma'am, we are really sorry, we really hope. His brother is person of the emergency. Right. In the earthquake, uh, in the earthquake the stone fell on the on his body, that's why he passed away. Oh my God, when, I'm extremely brother, sorry. So, you know, this, this uh, 
lady who is standing right behind me she has lost her brother in the earthquake uh, and right now her entire family including her husband father and sister are admitted in the indian army hospital and i will show you the visuals on the ground once again this is the indian army hospital which has been set up in hate province in iskenderun city and every day every hour people are being patients are being brought in here is a man who has just been brought in and the indian army is here they are trying their best to save as many lives as possible this is the indian army hospital and we are coming live from ground zero where the situation is extremely bad there are layers of devastation sir if i can uh, take you live he's uh, I'm, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Yadavir Singh. Lieutenant Yadavir Singh is with is with us live. So thank you for speaking to us and thank you for the work you are doing. How many people have you been uh, able to save right as of now? Uh, we have treated almost uh, 800 patients by now. By uh, 800 patients. Yes. So, 800 patients. Yes, correct. And 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 by by you know till when uh, do you do you think the hospital has to be here in Turkey? Uh, we are uh, open minded. we are ready to take on as long as is required our rep you. replenishment medicines are coming our dgms army is sending us the medicines continuously so tomorrow tomorrow also an aircraft is coming so we are ready to take on till uh, turkey needs us we'll be here so we really want to salute you our entire ndtv group and everybody from india i want to thank you for the work you are doing and he was the lieutenant commander and this is the indian army hospital where they are treating patients turkish people and trying to save as many lives now we are going to slip into a short break but on the other side we are going to show you more ground stories and the stories of human tragedy which has hit turkey and syria